In this mini lecture, we'll talk a little bit about the processes that form sedimentary rocks and the first type of sedimentary rock called clastic or detrital sedimentary rocks. So the process by which loose sediment is converted into solid sedimentary rock is called lithification or diagenesis. So essentially what happens here is loose sediment that's been transported via water or wind or ice will come to rest. They will gradually be buried over time and as it's buried, it will start to undergo lithification. And that first happens through compaction. So all of the spaces between the individual sediment grains become much more smaller as the particles com compact together. And then a secondary process called cementation takes place in which groundwater flowing through those pore spaces or those little open spaces between the sedimentary grains starts to slowly deposit minerals such as silica or calcite which starts to fill up those little open areas between the sand grains and locks them together to form a solid rock. Now this lecture will focus on the first type of three types of sedimentary rocks. The three types are clastic sedimentary rocks, chemical sedimentary rocks, and organic sedimentary rocks. Clastic rocks are primarily made up of minerals such as quartz, feldspars, micas, and various clay minerals. And we distinguish the various types of clastic rocks based upon their particle size. So starting with our largest or most coarse grain size, gravel, there are two types of clastic rocks. The first is breccia, followed by conglomerate. In breccia, the coarse grained rock fragments are much angular. As you can see in these photographs here, the uh, particles that make up the breccia rock are much angular in appearance. In contrast, notice here in this photograph of conglomerate that the constituent parts or the particles that make up the rock are much more rounded in appearance. If you look at breccia and conglomerate side by side, here you can clearly see the angular nature of the particles that make up breccia versus the much more rounded particles that make up conglomerate. Here are some more photographs that show kind of that rounded, cobble-sized, or more coarse-grained nature that make up conglomerate. Notice that most of these are poorly sorted, meaning that you have larger particles in a much more fine-grained matrix. Let's now step down in size to sand size particles. The collective name we give clastic rocks made up primarily of sand is sandstone. There are a number of different types of sandstones. In this class, we'll look at really these four types. The first is quartz aronite, also known as quartz sandstone, followed by arcos, and then lithic sandstone or gray wacky, which is mostly made up of a wide variety of sand sized rock fragments. Quartz sandstones are mostly made up of well-sorted, fine-grained, quartz-rich sand particles that are typically well-cemented. In this photograph, you see that this is a well-sorted rock, all of that fine-grained, sand-sized particle, and is primarily made up nearly 100% of quartz. Arcos sandstone, on the other hand, is a little more poorly sorted, meaning it contains a little more coarse fragments that are not all of the same size, and is typically much more rich in feldspar, particularly potassium feldspar, grain sizes. Here in these photographs you see the a little bit more angular nature of these grain sizes, meaning that they have not been transported as far, as well as the slightly less well sorted matrix. As I said earlier, lithic sandstones typically contain a lot greater variety of rock fragments, everything from shale to volcanic rock to fine-grained metamorphic rock fragments. Gray wackies is actually a special class of sandstones that contain greater than 15% silt and clay size as part of their matrix. And in this photograph here, you can see this gray wacky is supported with much more fine grain, that very, very fine grained components. Moving now to our smallest grain sizes, silt and clay, you can see that we differentiate our clastic rocks based upon either it being silt sized or that clay size. If it is silt, we would classify it as a silt stone. 
It is a, a massive rock. It lacks any sort of internal layering or laminations versus a clay stone, which is mostly going to be made up of clay-sized particles, but also lacks that internal laminations. A special type of very fine-grained clastic rock that does have kind of these layers or this lamination is called shale. In other words, shale will uh, kind of split or break into uh, very thin layers, a lot, very similar to the pages of a book, and we call this facility. So if it is fissile, it means it's layered like pages in a book. And these splitting takes place on very thin layers that we call laminations. A collective term that we use to describe both silt and clay together that lacks facility or those laminations is a mudstone. And this ends our mini lecture on clastic rocks.